So today will be a relook of this lens here. This is the 2870F2 by Canon and today will be a relook of it with the EOS R5. I'm Richard and welcome to ZP Productions and today will be a relook, a re-review of the lens 2870 on the EOS R5. Now this is one of the more requested re-reviews of the lenses because previously in my last review, you can take a look at the link up there, it is using the EOS R and many things have changed since then. Now the 2870 F2 is still a really really huge big lens that extends you know, it's still a very big lens. I, I think it doesn't change it after one year. Even with the R5, it's still a massively huge lens. Now, I won't go through the exact total physical specs because you can look at it in the previous review. But I can say that now with the size so big, but with a bigger body and a better grip on the EOS R5, it feels a lot better. I would say as this whole camera now is slightly more balanced than it was in the past. So overall, I think that the R5 with the 2870 in terms of handling is pretty good. Uh, I would say it's not an improvement, but at least it's more manageable than the past. Now, when it comes to autofocus, I would say as the R5 is an autofocus monster. And as such, the 2870 now does autofocus better than it was in the past. Uh, it is fast, it is quick. I do have a video here, but I can tell you that it is definitely better than even with the 85 1.2 RF and it does the job pretty well. So today, 70 on the R5 is a very good you know, lens for the purpose of things like events, weddings, anything that requires a certain amount of spontaneous movement, the R5 with the 2870 will work very well, especially that this lens have a f2 aperture. So really very versatile, very fast, very quick. I think most of the people that wants to do a review of this lens on the R5 is because in the past when I reviewed this lens, it was with the EOS R, which is a 30 megapixel camera. The R5 has 45 megapixels, so how does it impact the image quality that comes out of this lens? I can say as the lens is not as sharp as a prime, don't expect it to be as good as say the 51.2 or the 85 1.2, but if you ask me, it is relatively respectable. I'll show you some of the images now at 100% crop on the eye. You no, know, I'll just screenshot from Lightroom. And you can take a look that, you know, they are still really sharp. I mean, all of them are very usable and all of them are at 100%. Look at them, all the eyes. By the way, most of these shots are not in the center. They are in the outer regions. Means after the one-third mark, if you, you know, put up some grids on your camera, slightly after the one-third mark. Overall, the lens in terms of optics, even though, yes, it is not the sharpest lens, it does resolve pretty well still on the R5. Now, the R5 doesn't change any other thing of the optical quality of the lens, so there is still CA. The CA, as you can see in the shots, barely can be seen, so I don't think that's a huge issue. When it does come out, you expect about 1-2 pixels of CA, which can be corrected. But in terms of sharpness, as I said, even though it's 45 megapixels, 50% more than the USR, yeah, it's not not a big deal. You know, the lens still work pretty well even to the outer regions. Overall, if you ask me, the 2870 on the R5 is a very, very good system. I mean, with this, you can pretty much do events, portraiture, almost anything that under the sun that requires a lens that is relatively quick. This is an F2 lens in the end. So, you know, you get to do almost anything you want with this lens with a very good convenience factor of just having to zoom in and out and getting prime light quality throughout the lens. Now, I will still say that this lens is a prime light quality because compared to primes of the 28, 35, 50, 85, 1.8 or f2 lenses, this lens is on par with them. I mean, this lens optically will not lose to 35, will be better than the 50, 1.8, will be the same as the 85 f2. Sadly, Canon do not make very good f2 or f1.8 lenses. They make very good 1.2 lenses, but not good in the 1.8 f2. So this lens pretty much is still three primes in one, but it's more comparable with three affordable primes. So you now three affordable primes add together isn't even half the price of this lens. But you know, having the convenience of one lens to do it all, one lens to rule them all, I think this is a very good deal still. Now, as I said, this is going to be a very short re-review because pretty much that's about it. Anything, take a look at my 
previous review on the 2070, it still holds. Yes, the video is a bit old by now, but it still holds. The information there is still correct, and the 2070 is still a very fabulous lens. And it doesn't change the fact that with the R5, it still is the one of the best standard zooms in the market you can get, be it sharpness, be it performance. And with an f2 aperture, I think that there's nothing you cannot do with this lens as long as it lies within the focal range. And that's about it for today. I hope you enjoy this short little review. Now you notice that I kind of removed my uh, close-up dynamic mic and I actually opted for a shotgun mic. And recently you've seen I tested quite a lot of microphones so I think that I'll be using the shotgun mics from there, from here on, and I hope that you know it improves the general presentation. At least now you can see my table. I can present things. I won't be hitting into stuff. I won't have issues moving back and forth slightly. Unlike the previous time, either I turn to the right, I have no sound. I turn to the left, I have no sound. It's really weird. So there is a slight improvement to my channel itself. But overall, I will say as you know, having a nice microphone to just boom off camera to take my sound is a very good experience. Now, after this lens, I will talk more about the recent rumors in Canon in my next video. And then I'll talk some of the Fujifilm stuff. And finally, I'll be getting back my GFX uh, 100. So stay tuned for more reviews and testing and of course, some tutorials. In fact, I already plan out to have one or two tutorials on the recent shoots I have. Yes, they won't be like video tutorials, but I will have photos, diagrams to tell you how I shot this, what's my thought process. In fact, I probably want to create a proper series of them to just talk about it. And I hope that you guys will enjoy watching those tutorials in the future. Now, if you have anything you want to ask, any questions you want to you know, get answered by me, just leave down in the comments below. Do like and subscribe. Until the next video, bye-bye.